the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And so there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we read in Genesis chapter 12, the beginning of the story of Abram, better known as Abraham. Abram, exalted father, before he knew the Lord, the glory came to himself. But his name was changed to Abraham, father of many nations, because the Lord challenged him to leave his family and his country, and the Lord would bless him and bless all the families of the earth through him. And Abram believed God and did what God said. Let's read again from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram journeyed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions, that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Morah. And the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord, and called on the name of the Lord. And so Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And may the Lord bless his word. So Abram's told to leave his country and his family and his father's house to a land that I will show you. So as he departs, he has the promise that the Lord will guide him and he will be shown a land. At that stage, the promise wasn't that he would possess the land, but simply that he was to go to a land that God would show him. In other words, God would lead him and direct his travels. And so they came to Haran, but then he left his relatives at Haran, and at the age of 75, remembering the word of the Lord to him, he set off again, his nephew Lot coming with him, travelling south. He also had with him Sarai, his wife. She was indeed also his half-sister. And they had many possessions. The Lord had already blessed Abram with many possessions, with many people who came and helped him caring for his livestock. They were happy to be with Abram because Abraham, as a worshipper of God and as a believer in God was a very good master a very good boss to have so all these people came with Abram as he set off to come to the land of Canaan the land of Canaan is named after Ham's son Canaan and it was his descendants who had occupied this land well Abraham's passing through the land he's a traveller He's looking for a place that he might settle and is worshipping the Lord as he travels. And so he comes to Shechem. Shechem remains a very famous place in the scriptures. It was a place where Jacob settled for a while. It is where the city of Samaria was built. It is where the woman at the well, Sychar's well, met Jesus. Jacob dug that well there. So Abram first comes to Shechem and the Lord appears to him and says to your descendants I will give this land. 
Notice Abraham will not possess the land himself, but he is given the promise for the future. To your descendants I will give this land. And in response he builds an altar to the Lord and worships the Lord. In other words, his response to what the Lord says is one of belief and worship, not one of doubt and scepticism. Well, he keeps exploring the land, moving further south to a place called Bethel. Bethel is just up in the hills behind Jericho. Bethel and Ai become significant places in the story of Joshua. When the children of Israel took possession of the land, they crossed the river of Jordan opposite Jericho. The Lord destroyed Jericho before them, and then they moved up towards Bethel and Ai. At Ai they were defeated because some in the camp had taken things that God had said they should not take. They had loved the pagan worship rather than remaining true to the Lord. Nevertheless, the Lord continued to give them the land. Well, this is the place that Abram comes to. And again, as he sees this place, he calls on the name of the Lord and builds an altar there. So, characteristic of Abram's worship of the Lord are these altars that he builds, places that he can worship God with the sacrifice of a lamb. We learn about the lamb a little bit later. And so Abram journeys going still toward the south. Now it is because of this promise to your descendants I will give this land that the children of Israel identify the land of Israel as their land. And the actual boundaries that the scriptures set for the future dwelling is much larger than the present boundaries of the political settlement that they now have. It's to your descendants I will give this land. Abraham, in fact, never owned any land except that he purchased a small plot of land as a burial site when Sarah died. Having dwelt in the land for 200 years, his descendants through Jacob went down to Egypt. It was another 200 years later before they came back to be given the land. But they have had a chequered history over the land because they have not been continually faithful to the Lord. The story of the Old Testament is the story of their unfaithfulness and God's faithfulness. But the promise remains for God did not make it conditional on anything other than Abraham would leave his father's house and come to the land and so God unconditionally promised the land to them. And that's the promise that the disciples were looking to when Jesus was here. Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, can we have our land back? And God says, it's not for me to tell you when that will happen. He didn't say it wouldn't happen. It still lies in the future. When the Old Testament prophecies concerning the nation of Israel occupying the land, with David again reigning over them, will be fulfilled. For God keeps his promises. He made a promise to Abraham. He will keep that promise to Abraham. And Abram would enjoy God's blessing and fellowship during his sojourn, during his travelling, as he continued to put God first in his life. And so as he travelled, he built altars where he called upon the name of the Lord. The Lord he couldn't see was the one he worshipped. 